So this is my dad, and growing up, he was always in the military. So after school, when he picked me up, he would always be wearing his uniform, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. My dad was stationed in South Korea for two years, and so my sister was born in Seoul. After being stationed in Korea, my family moved to New York, and I was born in West Point. And then shortly afterwards, we moved to Texas because it's a huge military state. I grew up in San Antonio for most of my life, and I would always play games with my sister. We used to play a game called store, in which we would take items around the house and market them as a certain price and try to sell it to each other. We would grab the most inexpensive things and mark them up to twenty dollars. And we would use our real money. And so I was young at that time and had no concept of money, and would take an item and market it at a dollar. And my sister would say no, thank you. And then, and then at the very end, instead of redistributing the money in our piggy bank, she would just walk off with all the money that I had spent at her store, and I would have no money because she never bought anything from my store. And when I finally told my mom this story years after we had grown up, my mom was laughing so hard. And I think it just kind of describes my relationship with my sister, and that I was so naive and would just believe her and do anything she says. And to this day, I still look up to her the most, and I always hit her up when I'm in a bind and I need advice, and she's always been there for me. And growing up, I was so envious of. The older kids losing their teeth. I thought it was such a weird and cool concept, and I loved the wiggly feeling of a tooth and like when it pops out, like running your tongue where the tooth used to be. So when I lost my first tooth, I was super excited, and I was just waiting for the tooth fairy, and my mom, she has like no subtleties. Like growing up. For Christmas, like her handwriting, she didn't even try to hide that she was Santa. It was like so obvious. But anyways, um, she slipped some money underneath my pillow, and it woke me up. And I went and felt it, and it was a red envelope, and inside was fifty dollars. So I knew right away that the tooth fairy was not real because none of my white friends ever received a red envelope. And fifty dollars is an outrageous amount for a tooth, but ever since then, that kind of just like fueled my desire to just lose all my teeth, and I just kept on trying to crack on like bones and stuff to pop out my teeth, and to this day, I'm just still fascinated with teeth, and I think that's kind of why I might want to be a dentist. We'll see. I don't know what I'm doing with my life, but anyways. Um, I love eating, and that's how I bond with my dad. But there was one time I was eating a duck meatball very quickly, and as I was swallowing it, I sneezed simultaneously, and stuff flew out of my nose. It burned like there were peppers inside the meatball, so it burned going out of my nose. But at that time, I wasn't really thinking, and like there were just gray bits that flew out of my nose, and my nose was hurting like hell. So I, like, kind of started tearing up, and was like, "Dad, I just blew out my brain." And then my dad <laughs> was like, "Julia, you can't blow out your brain." And and then I realized I was just being stupid, and I want to say I was really young when that happened, but it was really. When I was eighteen and entering college, but anyways, um, I really like photography. That's kind of been my side hobby, but I'm not really good at it. But I just love taking photos and filming things. Um, I grew up watching YouTube and would watch that twenty four seven. Like Ryan Higa was the love of my life. I was convinced I was gonna marry him. Um, and with my sister, we made travel vlogs, and it was really fun. And then on YouTube, I made a fan edit.、Um, I don't know if anyone's read Normal People or watched Normal People, and you know I won't make it too graphic this drawing, but you get the idea. Anyways, 
The content of the videos were from BBC. BBC kind of copyrighted and filed me. So then the video got taken down. <laughs> and I have a copyright strike on my channel. <laughs> but yeah, for a hot minute, I did have a YouTube channel. Anyways, um, some other fun facts. I really like reading um, Haruki Murakami. It has just like shaped me so much. I don't know why. I just really like his books. But also the Percy Jackson series. So good. So monumental. Um, and that's how I made my first friend at UVA. She saw that I had Percy Jackson fan art on my phone. And that's how we bonded. And we've been friends ever since. Um, and then I get asked a lot of times that since I'm from Texas, how did I end up here? And it's because I make impulsive decisions and I read To All the Boys I've Loved Before and it's a trilogy. And then in the last book, Lara Jean really wants to go to UVA because that's where her parents met. And so there's a scene where she runs up the steps with her boyfriend, Peter Kavinsky, and, um... They talk about UVA, and I was like, this is a sign, God, and decided this is where I want to go. And then I impulsively applied. So here are a few photos of my friends, because you're probably tired of my crusty-ass drawings. Um, these photos are not at all representative of like how good the memories were. I don't know why they're such low quality and I have so few photos, but uh, I really appreciate my friends. And um, let me just spotlight Kobe real quick. Because he, I swear I have more white friends. I swear he's not my only white friend. But he's so nice and so sweet. So if you ever see Kobe, just say hi to him for me. Um, he's amazing.